Muse for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, Muser, and welcome to day 14 of building a chef website in Adobe Muse. Today we're on SEO and Favicon, so I'll click on the day 14 folder. So I'll double click, and the files we have for today, we have the assets, and we have the Favicon image, and the Favicon is what shows up within the tab when you're in the browser, and it also shows up in the bookmark section when a user bookmarks your page. So it's kind of branding the website, and I'll go over this a bit more as we're adding the Favicon. And then we have the day 14 SEO and Favicon PNG and the SEO and Favicon completed section, the .muse file. So I'll go, go ahead and double click on the PNG. And for today, we're gonna add the paragraph tags. We're gonna add the title and description. We're gonna add a suffix and prefix to the, to the title of the page. We're gonna add alternative text to the images and we're gonna add a Favicon image. So I'll go ahead and close this here and I'll go back to the root of the course folder and I'll double click on the chef website starting file dot muse. So I'll double click and I'll double click on the home page. And the first thing we're gonna do before we add SEO or search engine optimization is that we're gonna unpin these elements here at the top within the header. So I'm gonna go to the plan view and I'm gonna go to the master page and I'm gonna pin the elements, I'm gonna unpin the elements here at the top. This was just for demonstration purposes in the previous video where we added anchor points uh, to, the, to the website and then we added a fixed header at the top and then we scrolled to the different anchor points. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpin to bring back to the original state. So I'm gonna click on the logo and then on the left, I'm gonna unpin it by unchecking this box uh, with the square here in the upper left and I'll click on the menu. And again, I'll uncheck this box here to unpin it from the browser. And I'll select the contact text and the background and I'll unpin it from the top of the page here. So now the website will scroll with the rest of the website and it's back to uh, its original state. So we just added that fixed header for the anchor points. So we could have that menu fixed at the top and then we added the different anchor points. So I'll go ahead and delete this rectangle in the back. So I just selected it and select delete. So now I'll go to the plan view and I'll double click on the home page. And here we are on the home page. So now let's add the SEO. So SEO is kind of a loaded word as many have used it to try and drive more traffic to their website. It stands for search engine optimization and it is added to a website so search engines can crawl your website correctly and also so your website shows up correctly within the search engines. I like to say that there is no magic potion to getting more traffic to your website and appearing on the first page within Google as that usually requires social media campaigns and doing a lot more to make people aware of your website. But there are things you can do so that if users do search for your website, they can easily find you and will want to click to go to your page. Things like adding the correct page title and description so users know what the website is about. With that said, there are things you can do that will increase your chances of landing on the first page within Google. One of them is targeting the specific city where your business is or where you offer your service. So rather than trying to reach the entire world, you are narrowing down your audience by targeting a specific city or even town. By adding the city name in the title and description, you can increase your chances of a user finding your website. And if the market you are targeting is not saturated, you will have a much better chance of appearing on the first page within Google. Let's get started adding SEO to the website. So the first thing I'm gonna do is show an example of the muse for You website. So here I am within the Google search. So I'm gonna type in muse for You, And here we have the muse for You title and description. So if I zoom in here, here we have the title. This is the title prefix, it says muse for You. The page name is home and the suffix is Adobe Muse CC. So we're gonna add the prefix and suffix, these last two phrases, within the master page. And we're gonna change the page name by going to the plan view and changing the page name there. And then we're gonna add a description within the page. So here the description for Muse4U is, Muse4U is a YouTube channel and website 
dedicated to educating web designers about Adobe Muse. Awesome websites plus no code equals Muse for you. So Adobe Muse lets us change the page name and description so you show up correctly within the search engines if a user searches for your website. So I'll go back into Adobe Muse and the first thing we're gonna do is change the title and description. So to change the title of the page, we're gonna go to the plan view right up here and click on plan. And then here on the home page, we're gonna double click on home and we're gonna rename the page. So I'm gonna call this page Chef Mark and select enter. So there we've changed the page name. And if I go to file preview page in browser, we can see that right here in the tab, it says Chef Mark for the page name. And we have this little icon here. This is what's called a favicon and it doesn't really represent anything because we haven't added a favicon to the page. If we look at the Google tab, we can see it has the Google symbol for the favicon and this brands this particular tab. And if I were to bookmark this page, that bookmark would have this Google symbol. Now let's add a page prefix and suffix to really let the user know what the page is about. So to add a prefix and suffix, we'll go to the plan view and we'll double click on the master page. So the prefix and suffix can only be added via the master page. And to add it, you go to page right up here, go to page properties, and then make sure you're on the metadata tab here, not the layout or options, but metadata. And right down here at the bottom, we have a page title prefix and a page title suffix. So for the prefix, which is what goes before the page name, I'm gonna add food bank because that's the name of the company and that's the name on the logo. And then I'm gonna enter a space and I'm gonna place in a vertical line. And to do that, you hold down shift and then right below the delete key, there's this vertical line symbol and just select that key right there and enter in space again. So we have the space here between the line and food bank and there'll be a space between this line and the page name. So now let's add the page title suffix, which goes after the page name. So again, I'll enter in a space to add a space between the page name and the suffix, and then I'll hold down shift, and right below the delete key, I'll add a line and another space, and I'll title this or name this Kansas, Missouri, or excuse me, Kansas City, Missouri. And that's the city where the service is being offered. So I'll click OK. We've now added the page title and prefix. Make sure to add the spaces so the page name shows up correctly, or the title shows up correctly. And I'll click OK. And now let's go back to the home page. And I'll go to File, Preview Page, and Browser. And if we go to the tab right up here, we can see the title of the page is Food Bank, Chef Mark, Kansas City, Missouri. And the max length of the title should only be 60 characters. I've already counted these characters here and it comes out to 45 characters. So that's a good title for the page. So again, the max length should only be 60 characters and you can go online and find a character counter to make sure that your title isn't longer than 60 characters so it doesn't get cut off in uh, the Google search engine and, and it's also a best practice to not make your title longer than 60 characters. So now I'll go back and the next thing we're gonna do is add a description to the page. So I'll go back into Muse and to add a description, you go to page and page properties and now we're on the actual page, not the master page. And then here again, you wanna be on the metadata tab, not layout or options, but metadata. In the option section, you can change the page name as well, but you can also do it from the plan view. So here I wanna be in metadata, so I'll click metadata. And for the description, I'll just create a description. I'll say, learn how to cook healthy food with Chef Mark in Kansas City, Missouri. Just like that. And I could probably add food bank somewhere in there. For now, I'm just gonna leave it like this. So it says, learn how to cook healthy food with Chef Mark in Kansas City, Missouri. So now this website is more likely to show up for anyone looking to cook healthy food in Kansas City, Missouri, because we have Kansas City, Missouri in the title, and we also have it in the description. So anything you want the user to find, it's good to have it in the title and in the description. So I did want to include the word food bank in the description because that's the name of the company. So I could write, learn how to cook healthy food with Chef Mark at the food bank 
in Kansas City, Missouri. So that looks good there. We have Food Bank in the title and Kansas City, Missouri as well. And we also have Chef Mark in the title. So that would be a good description for this page. So here we're targeting a specific city. We're talking about healthy food. We mentioned Chef Mark because the page has Chef Mark on it. And we have the company name as well. So the description can be 160 characters. So I could even make this a bit longer if I wanted to. Um, there are a lot of articles on creating descriptions and best practices for creating descriptions. So I'm just kind of going over the fundamentals and things you can do to, to make sure that your website looks good when someone's searching in the search engines. So here we have keywords and Google doesn't look for keywords anymore. So you don't really need to add them. I myself like to add them just in case. So here I would type in, you know, food bank, Chef Mark, uh, Kansas City. I could do Kansas City, Missouri. I might do here at the beginning, like, you know, healthy food. Healthy, yeah, I can type it healthy food and cooking, cooking healthy food, something like that. So you can add keywords. Again, Google doesn't really look for these, but I myself like to add them just in case. So there we have it. We've added the title and description and the city name is in the title and in the description. So we've targeted this page a bit more. So if someone is searching for this site in Kansas City, Missouri, it is more likely to show up in Google. And if the market is not saturated, you have a better chance of showing up in the search engines. So there are a lot of articles on the web on search engine optimization, uh, but these are just kind of the fundamentals in Adobe Muse to help you get started with search engine optimization. So we've done that. So now let's move on to the H1 and H6 tags. So within the site, there's different, there's different topics or different headlines. The most important headline is the H1 tag. And then you have subheadings within the website. So Google likes to know how the website is organized. So what are the more, the most important topics on the site? And you can, it's kind of like a cascading. So H1 is the most important. H2 is less important, H3, H4, H5, and H6. So it's kind of like creating the outline for your website and Google likes to see this to know what's what are the most important parts of your website. So we've already done that as we were building the site. So the title here, or the main title of the page has an H1 tag. And to assign H1 through H6 tags, you can click on the text or the text box. And then in the text panel, we have this paragraph tag here. And if you click the drop down, we have the paragraph tag, we have the H1 tag, which is the headline, we have the subheads H2 through H6. So the, the title at the top is the headline, which is eat healthy, feel the power of healthy food. So we have about us, we have nutrition, recipes. So let me zoom in a, a bit more. Oops, let me go down here. So yeah, about us, we have uh, recipes in the different sections. We have our blog, we have clients and yep, and there we go. So as we were building the site, we assigned H2 tags to the gradient widget. So if we go into the widget options, we can see here for the paragraph tag, it's an H2 subhead. And we've assigned this to all of these titles here for the different sections. So recipes, our blog, they all have an H2 uh, subhead. So there's different schools of thought on how many H1 tags you should have and H2s and things like that. So I'd recommend doing a few Google searches and just looking into H1 through H6 tags. And you'll see it's kind of like a cascading thing where the H1 is more the most important and the H6 would be the least important and then everything else is kind of in between there. So those are the H1 through H6 tags. We kind of already did that as we were building the site. And again, this main title has an H1 tag and these different sections here have the H2 tag, these different titles and those were added through the gradient text widget. And the H1 was added through the text panel here on the left. So now let's move on to alternative text. So on screen readers that don't show images, alternative text is very important. This lets the user know what an image is about if they can't see the image. So on different images here, we have these images that are placed onto the site. And on a screen reader, these images wouldn't be visible. So you can add alternative text and it'll show up instead of the image. The alternative text will show up instead of the image. So to add alternative text, you can select the image. So here I've selected these chilies. You can right click, go to edit image properties. 
And here you can add a tooltip which shows up if you hover over the image. So I can add image of chilies. And then for alternative text, or these look like peppers actually, image of peppers. And then for the alternative text, you could say image of peppers for, for food bank. You know, you can get as descriptive or as non-descriptive as you'd like for this. Just, you know, what do you want people to see if they can't see the image? So here I'll click OK and I'll add a period here. So for the sentence and I'll click OK. And then I can go through on these different images. So I can right click, edit image properties, give it a tooltip. So I can say image of leaf and beans and image of leaf and beans for food bank. Click OK. And I'll do it one more here for the tomato. So I'll click on the tomato, I'll right click, go to edit image properties. And for the tooltip, I'll say image of tomato. And here I'll say image of tomato for food bank. All right, looks good. So there we have the alternative text and you can add it to the different images here on the site. You can go through and kind of get some practice with that. With images inside rectangles, you can't add alternative text. So if I right click, it doesn't let me add alternative text to images within rectangles. So you might just want to be aware of that as you're building your site. You know, what do you want? What images do you want to have alternative text applied to? And alternative text works really well for call to action images that are not visible on screen readers. So the user can know that rather than clicking on the image, they can click on the text and that'll take them to a call to action or a different page or anything you want that user uh, to go to. So they're really good for call to action and just to let people know what the image is about if the image is not uh, visible. And also it helps search engines crawl the images and it lets search engines know more about the image. So as they're indexing it or if a user searches for the image, that image will have more of a description applied to it and the user can read that description. All right, so that is alternative text. You can apply it to images. And again, it's not applied to images within rectangles. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is add the favicon image, and that just brands the website a bit more. So if we go to Google, or to the site, and we look here, we see we have kind of this document symbol. I want that to, to represent the website a bit more. So as an example, if I go to museforyoushop.com, and I look here, we see the favicon is the Muse For You logo. So this is a good way to brand your website so that it stands out from other websites as well. And it's not just this blank document symbol. So to add a favicon, you simply go to file, then go to site properties, and then here go to content. So we have layout content and advanced, go ahead and click on content. And then right down here, we have what's called the favicon image. So here we can choose a new image file to use as a favicon. So here I'll click on the folder, and it brings me to the favicon image. If you're not brought to this image, you can navigate to that folder within the course folder. So it's day 14, SEO and favicon, and then it's in the assets folder, and then it's this favicon 32 by 32 PNG. So I'll go ahead and double click, and here we can see the favicon image appears here. So I'll go ahead and click on OK. All right, so now if I go to file, preview page, and browser, We now have that favicon image here within the tab of the website. And if I were to bookmark this, this image would show up in the bookmarks and it also shows up here in the tab to show us that it's the food bank website. So just a quick website in case you wanted to create your own favicon, you can go to favicon.cc. So here you can import an image and save out the favicon. All right, so I'll go ahead and close this here. So we are now done with day 14 seo and favicon again uh, there's no magic potion to you know getting ranked in the search engines i would suggest you know social media media campaigns if you do want to do that also youtube videos work really well to kind of uh, give your website a bit more exposure and to make more people aware of your website uh, so again we are done with search engine optimization and favicon tomorrow we're going to be moving on to day 15 and testing tools News for you, awesome websites without code.